Good morning. How are you all? <laughs> We're here. I'm thankful you're here. I'm here. Um, welcome on this Holy Trinity Sunday. It's the one time of the year that we uh, celebrate a doctrine. Yay! Well, no worries, I'm not gonna try to explain it. We're just gonna try to live into the mystery of the Trinity. Um, thank you, Pastor Hal, who may not be here today, but thank you, Hal, for uh, leading worship the last couple of weeks. Um, thank you, all of St. Paul. Uh, it was a great time for Jan and I to get away and uh, connect with really good friends. Um, for a graduation and on the North Shore of Lake Superior, it was beautiful. Um, thank you, James, today for filling in for Janet, allows her a little bit of time off uh, this week. So we're thankful for who being able to uh, take some time to re, uh, restore and recoup, uh, not recuperate, but to restore. Um, Next week, we'll mem we will welcome new members. So if you are interested and we haven't spoken directly, uh, please do so this week. We can still do that. There's no rush. We can uh, talk about it at a later date. Or you just continue to be a part of us. Um, for me, and I know for the rest of the congregation, if you're here, you're a part of us. Um, and that goes for you online as well, although we continue to try to figure out how to connect with all of you online. Um, we have some new faces with us, which we're excited about. Uh, a little note on our bulletin. All of the hymns, uh, the liturgy that we sing is incorporated into the bulletin. At the back of the bulletin are the three hymns that we have. And if uh, you prefer, you can look it up in the uh, red hymnal that's in front of you. It's in both uh, places. So, and if you get lost, hopefully who's, somebody sitting around you will, will help you out. Um, it's a liturgical setting, and so we're anticipating um, that you gotta follow along a little bit or simply be present. Are there any other announcements? I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so. Hopefully there's been some activity going on. Um, I've heard uh, there's some movement on this, so we'll, I'll get some more updates on that and next week have a little bit more information on that. Peggy? Oh yeah, microphone if you want everyone to hear you. Council, I think, already knows the information, but um, Katrin Parent has stepped down from being our treasurer. So we uh, are very thankful that Paul Thompson has uh, graciously said, I will be acting treasurer until a new one is elected. So. Uh, the treasurer has to be elected by the congregation. And before we can elect anybody, we need to have volunteers of who might be interested um, in becoming our treasurer. Uh, it's a three-year term, and uh, you will get guidance from Paul and finance and, and any of us on council as much as we can. So... We would appreciate um, you thinking about it, praying about it, and letting either Sarah or myself know. Thank you. Thanks, Peggy. Any other announcements? Oh, well, I simply invite us to breathe in um, on this Trinity Sunday three times. Um, We'll learn of all the different names that we uh, refer to our God, uh, most traditionally Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We breathe that in three times. Let us rise and sing hymn 735.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is a... ...to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life. And life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy and you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. And it is not bolded, but please join me in the prayer of the day. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us all truth by your spirit that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. All praise to you, 
Creator, Christ, and Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Our first lesson is found in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of the Lord's robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above the Lord. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces. 
and with two they covered their feet. And with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of the glory of the Lord. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a person of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the sovereign, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life. We will read responsively Psalm 29, found on page 6 in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a hill by a lost. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Our second lesson is found in Romans chapter 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with Christ, so that we may also be glorified with Christ. Word of God, word of life. All right, I think I saw Gabriel and Noah And we have another little, if he's brave enough to come up with a parent, all are welcome. You guys grew in two weeks. Holy moly. 
Hey, look at that little one. Thanks, I should introduce you, and I've already forgotten her name. Adeline. Adeline, Adeline this is Gabriel, and Noah. Noah, this is Adeline. Yeah, and tell me your name. Michael and Brittany, welcome. So this morning, um, I mentioned that it's Trinity Sunday. Any guesses on what Trinity means? Hmm, try. Have you heard that part if we break it down? Try. Yeah. So in Latin, it uh, it's, means three, basically. Um, and we talk about God uh, as the Trinity. Typically, we say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? You've heard that. What are some other words that we've, you've maybe heard? Putting you on the spot. I, const- I, I frequently see creator, Christ, and spirit. For me, that's more um, gender inclusive. That's not as important for everyone, but that's important for me. What are other, um, well, I mean, at the end of the day, I talked about how we can't really explain how God is three in one, one in three, right? So we say God is three persons, but is one God. Um, and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a doctrine of the church. And at the end of the day, I, your pastor, am telling you that I don't really know what it means. But, but I can say this, um, that the Trinity helps us to uh, understand God, that God um, is showing us love in a bazillion different ways, and we need some language to it. So I say we crowdsource these folks out here and try to get a bigger picture. What are other words or descriptors that you use for God? Sometimes we say comforter, parent. What else? Come on now, I'm putting you on the spot. What is it? Pitcher, catcher, and ref. All right, I've never heard that before. Awesome. Others? Teacher. Yeah. Redeemer. Shepherd. Shepherd. I think the list is probably endless. So encourage us to keep thinking about that and how we feel God coming to us and keep our eyes open for that. Will you pray with me? And you can repeat after me. (laughs) Dear God. We don't fully understand this Trinity thing. The cool thing is, we know that's okay. Please keep showing yourself to us in all the ways that we've named and more. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you for joining me. You can return to your seats. I told Sarah that uh, having a dog with us is kind of like having kids. We have to learn how to be in the space. So even with the wiggles and squiggles, it's all good. The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born from above? How can anyone be born after having grown old? 
Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, you are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of humanity. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of humanity be lifted up, that whoever believes may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave the Son, so that everyone who believes may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Invite you to be seated. <clears throat> Our text for today is early in John's gospel. And so that means we are early in Jesus' ministry. And we see that what Jesus is doing has already caused some tension, especially with the religious leaders. But Nicodemus, <clears throat> one of those religious leaders, was instead curious to stay under the radar of his fellow comrades, he comes in the darkness of night to see Jesus. He knows Jesus because of all the things that he has already seen and heard, right? Things like what happened in the first couple of the chapters of John, the spirit descending like a dove and resting upon Jesus as he was baptized, making baptism more than this ritual cleansing and revealing it to be a flooding of the spirit within one's soul. Things like Jesus speaking two words, follow me, and them following. Things like Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding, giving a foretaste of the feast to which all are invited. And things like the scene in the temple where Jesus dares the crowd to destroy the temple because he could then raise it up in just three days. I'm sure they thought he was nuts, right? It took him 40 years to build the temple. And Jesus, of course, is not referring to bricks and mortar. Nicodemus says that he's seen all of these things and that he knows that Jesus is of God. And Jesus affirms that, right? But then his words are perplexing. You can't see this on your own. Do you get that? You can't decide this. You can't control this. God is with you through water and wine. God is calling you to love and to serve. God is in you not confined to some building or location. And you can see this when you're born from above. But Nicodemus still doesn't get it, so Jesus tries again. He says, nobody can see the kingdom without being born of water and the spirit. Nicodemus still doesn't get it. So Jesus likens the spirit to the wind 
You see the effects of the wind, you hear the effects of the wind, but apart from maybe some meteorologists who think they know, you don't really know where the wind is coming from or where it is going. Like the wind, the spirit dances as it wishes. So I don't know about you, as I just uh, confessed earlier, I identify with Nicodemus. I don't really get it. Do you? This whole Trinity thing? And why does it seem that some have the spirit and some don't? Right? It's like that old camp chant. I've got the spirit. Yes, I do. I've got the spirit. How about you? I've got spirit. Yes, I do. We've got spirit. How about you? Yay. I've always struggled with how much of this world and its happenings are of us and how much of it is of God. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, where we once again try to understand how God is three in one, I believe we ultimately land in the mystery of God. Because trying to explain the Trinity nearly always falls short, right? You've heard all kinds of of ways of trying to do that. The Trinity is like water. It's in three forms, ice, you know, liquid, solid, gas, Or a person uh, functions in three different roles, a mom, a sister, and a friend. But all of our explanations fall into the heresies, right? That were catalysts for all the creeds that we have throughout the centuries. We're always trying to put it into words. And it's not bad to talk about it and try to figure it out. Attempts to make sense of this whole Trinity thing is good. But I think we also have to admit we don't really get it. I think God does. And I don't think God's losing any sleep over us not fully understanding it. It's good to talk about it and articulate our faith, what you believe um, and why. And then to listen to what your neighbor believes and why. I think in that seeking, there's growth and there are times where our eyes and souls are opened in those conversations. And I think that's what Jesus is trying to tell Nicodemus. Nobody fully gets it except me. I know the mind of God because I am God. And so just as Moses lifted up the serpent to reveal deliverance, Jesus says, I was lifted up on the cross to reveal God's love. God, through Jesus, has done it all. And we can't see this on our own. Luther had some poignant words on the topic in his explanation for the third article of the Apostles' Creed. If you remember, did you have to memorize it when you were in confirmation? Do you remember it? I believe, I cannot believe on my own. I believe, I cannot believe on my own. It is the Spirit who continually reveals this love so that we may be assured of God's unbreakable bond with us. It is not our understanding, it's not our doing, it's not us deciding to accept Jesus. There was a time in my life when I struggled with this theology of thinking it was about me doing it. I about drove myself crazy. I would doubt and fret and wonder if I had truly meant it right when I asked Jesus into my heart. And I'd have this little conversation with Jesus and everything would feel great. I'd feel okay, I'd go about life and then something difficult would happen again as life uh, presents itself. And then it would make me question and I'd agonize all over again. It was horrible um, thinking that my salvation was 
up to me. Thank God our current and eternal life is not left up to us. Ephesians 2 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, which I consider me making it a decision to let Jesus into my heart. I consider that works, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. So even though our attempts to explain the mystery of God always fall short, and because it is good to ponder mystery, it's a both and world. Let me see the eye roll, Olivia. It's a both and world. I'd like to leave you with some thoughts that help me understand. I don't know about you, but I've always been haunted with those cries of distress distress of abandonment as Jesus hangs on the cross, right? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is verses in Ephesians and Colossians and the wisdom of Solomon where it talks about the spirit being the glue, so to speak, that holds all things together. So to make sense of Jesus' feelings of abandonment as he dies, I have this mysterious picture in my mind of how the bond of the Spirit abided in the Father and the Son. And the Spirit was that unbreakable bond which held fast through the darkest of times. I see our God as this divine community a dance between three persons, hands gently holding, supporting, and never letting go, except for this most awesome part. The creator, the Christ, and the spirit makes room for you and for me and for all of creation. Amen. So our song is come join the dance of the Trinity. Invite you to rise as you are able.
we come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest. Sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give your blessing of peace to the nations. Shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, and questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they lived with hope, in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God, Here, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with those worshiping online. Peace be with you and with one another.
taste of the feast to come. We pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Drink of this for the forgiveness of sin and in remembrance of me. And together, as we live into the kingdom, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. And if uh, you're new to our uh, serving of sharing communion together, there'll be two stations up front. Just make your way down the center aisle and make your way back around. And if you're not sure about communion, come up for a blessing um, or both. Come. body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Come.
Please rise. We pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Source and sovereign, rock and cloud, we sing together. <laughs>